Hello YouTube. Today I'm going to show you how to install a 240 volt outlet to charge an electric vehicle. A special thanks to my electrician for allowing me to film this video. I recently bought a 2018 Tesla Model 3 Performance and I wanted to charge it at home. And the best way to do this was to install a 240 volt outlet in the garage to charge it. Thankfully, my breaker panel is in the garage, so there's not too much vi wiring in involved. Unfortunately, all my circuit breakers were in use, so my friend had to swap some of the old circuits out with some 50 amp circuits. If you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button and show your support to my channel. My channel has grown significantly and it's all thanks to you guys. If you want to connect with other Lincoln MKZ owners, check out the real Lincoln MKZ Facebook enthusiast group, which I will leave a link in the description below. Anyways, for this project you're going to need the following materials, which I will show you on the screen. My electrician is going to open up the breaker panel to access the wires, so he's going to cut some of the drywall out. Make sure to use a stud finder and see if there are any live wires running behind the walls before cutting. Your setup might be completely different and you probably don't even have to cut any walls or anything like that. So about this charger, I'm not installing a Tesla wall charger. Instead, I'm just using the mobile connector to charge my Tesla. I was using the 110 volt outlet and man it's so slow and I've also discovered that it's less efficient compared to the 240 volt charger. But you would think that the 240 volt would be less efficient. At least that's what I thought. Here's some info that I didn't know about charging. There's a bell curve on optimal battery charging. Too little or too slow charging will is wasting energy too fast and you're damaging the battery by overheating it one quick note about dc fast charging is when any battery is depleted the battery chemistry can handle large recharging currents as there are large surface areas inside the battery that can handle the restoration process as the battery gets closer and closer to full charge, those areas fill up and can no longer accept any more charge. If the charging process continues to pump the same amount of charge into the battery, that energy will be turned into heat instead of storing energy. Heat is the greatest destructive process in any battery, so the DC fast charger is designed to reduce the charge current accordingly. It's a compromise between fast and safe charging, so you really take your chances when you're using fast charging. The optimal charge uh, rate for this car, from all of the research I've done, is the 30 amps at 240 volt for this car. And this is why I avoided the wall charger, because it can charge the vehicle much faster than the mobile charger, but I want my battery to last as long as possible. So the 240 volt charging would be the most optimal for this battery I think. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think. Anyways, let's talk about the cost to do this wiring for this project. All in, I spent $800 Canadian to install this 240 volt charging system at my house. I think that's a really good deal as my neighbor spent nearly $1,500 getting his 240 volt installed. I'm going to fast forward as my electrician cuts through the drywall and this uh, plywood backboard here.
Now we are setting up the 240 volt outlet box and preparing to run the wires to the breaker panel. The 240 volt outlet and wire is going to run on the wall. In this situation it's more of the function compared to the aesthetic look for me. Most newer homes comes with a built in electric vehicle charging outlet and sub panel but my house is 7 years old. I'd have to remove all the drywall to run the wires inside the walls which would cost a lot of money to do. So I'm just running it on the wall as neat as possible. Okay, so this is where all the tricky part comes in. My electrician removed four of the existing circuits and installed the 50 amp circuits in place of them. I will fast forward as my electrician does this. Make sure to turn off all the power before removing the breaker panels. I know that's a no-brainer, but accidents can still happen.
All right, so this is the final product. All the wiring has been complete. The four new mini breakers have been installed. And my electrician is just finishing up some final connections on the outlet. And it's pretty much job done from here. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button and subscribe. If you have any questions about the installation, just chime in in the comment section and I'll try my very best to help you guys out. See you all next time.